there and welcome to today's ride. It's actually quite a momentous day. Back in December, I was challenged by one of my viewers to ride my bike every single day for 90 days. And then on the 1st of January, I decided to take Nathan up on his challenge. And today is the 2nd of April. And that means I've been riding my bike every single day so far for 93 days. As you can imagine, riding my bike every day for 93 days is going to have some really good benefits for my cycling, but perhaps not quite the ones that you're thinking. The rules of the challenge were very easy and straightforward. As long as you sat on your bike and you pedaled more or less for four or five minutes so one kilometer of cycling that counted as a ride but I'll be very honest and say that I have my doubts about being able to ride every day for the whole of the 90 days not just on a, a kind of a, a cycling level but more on a practical level I thought that um, I would be just too busy to be able to find the time to do it every single day. And in the end, I was wrong. <laughs> That's not to say it wasn't without its complications though. 30 days in and I came down with the uh, dreaded Rona so that saw me going out into the garage every day and just ticking away and doing a simple one kilometre ride and I recovered from that and then three weeks later I came down with flu and I ended up doing the same and it's only just now that I think I'm kind of getting back to some form of normality. My stats over the last 93 days or so haven't been overly impressive, I must admit. I cycled 1,131 kilometers and I'd climbed 10,431 meters. Now, had I not gone down with COVID and had I not gone down with flu a couple of weeks later and had to resort to just cycling one kilometer on the turbo trainer, that distance and that climbing altitude may well have been slightly different. Hopefully it would have been closer to maybe 2000 kilometers and maybe 15,000 meters of climbing. All in all though, I'm not overly disappointed because I think generally speaking, that would be up on any other uh, period from January to April for me. Um, I'm just going out and doing my regular 30, 40 kilometer rides here and there when I fancied it. The obvious question that many people would ask after cycling 93 days is, have you lost any weight? Well, the answer to that is no, but neither have I put on any weight. Um, I'll be honest and say that I'm still trying to lose the weight that I put, uh, put on over Christmas. Christmas 1985 I have to add but then I'll preface all of that by saying that this isn't a weight loss channel it's all about getting on the bike 
having fun and hopefully getting fit at the same time. The main benefit I would say that I got from riding every day was just changing my relationship with cycling. Going out every single day and committing to going out every single day meant that you kind of thought, yeah, I'm a cyclist, I have to do this. And that's probably why I'm being a bit stupid today and taking on one of the local toughies of Speltham Hill. <laughs> Blimey, I have to admit that surprised me. I went up Speltham Hill this time last year, first on my e-bike, and that was tough. And then the next day on this Cannondale, and I made it up. I genuinely thought that I wouldn't make it up today because I'm just not as fit as I was this time last year. There's no two ways about that. But I did manage all the way up Speltham Hill today without getting off and walking and I suppose if I can do that then my fitness can't be that bad and I can go on and do pretty much anything if I put my mind to it. Like many cyclists my biggest problem is silencing the slob within and getting out on the bike to do that first kilometre. I find once I've managed to get over that doing 10 kilometers, 20, 30 kilometers even, is a lot easier. And you get back home after a ride and you think to yourself, well, I actually enjoyed that and I'm looking forward to going out tomorrow. But then when tomorrow comes, that slobs back. But having that committed every day kind of takes that away and you can concentrate on the ride. I've already had people asking me, now that the challenge is officially over, how do I feel about it? Am I happy? Am I sad? And what are my plans? Well, I wouldn't say that I'm happy that the uh, 90 day challenge is over. I'm glad that it, it is officially done now. And basically anything that I do from here on is down to me. And with that said, I think that is generally the plan. 90 is so close to 100 days so I'm going to at least continue on and do 100 days of cycling and then I think I'll take it from there really 365 days or a whole year of cycling is certainly possible but I think the one kilometer minimum can sometimes make the ride a bit too easy I think maybe I need to up the stakes a little bit and go out and do slightly longer rides because if I can just do one kilometer then that kind of stops me from doing anything longer if I'm feeling a bit lazy. If you are thinking of doing your own similar 90 day challenge be that cycling, running, swimming, walking, whatever you want don't underestimate yourself. If you think you can't do it, think again, because like I say at the beginning of this challenge, I thought I would never complete it. And here I am, not only at the end of 90 days, but I've gone beyond that and I'm planning to go even further. There we go, that's today's ride, 30 kilometers and an ascent up the killer of Speltham Hill. I'm really pleased with that. Like I say, having the 90 day challenge certainly silenced my slob and uh, got me out on the bike when I needed to. But another really great way of getting yourself motivated is to have something really good to look forward to. And if you want something like that, then click on the video just here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.